William Adolphe Bouguereau's 1875 masterpiece, now known as Girl with a Pomegranate, was out of public view for nearly a century, and its absence subtly diminished the way the public thought about Bouguereau, and its reemergence now changes how we think about the artist as well. After all, Girl with a Pomegranate isn't exactly your typical Bouguereau. First, it's an unqualified masterpiece. The stunning finish and details of the painting are rendered with so much care, you can imagine the feel of the raw silk of the headdress in your hands. What a beautiful fabric. It comes alive in ways more typical of a William Godward or occasionally Angra. I think I could go to a dozen fabric stores without finding anything quite that lovely. And look at the pomegranate. Its color is ravishing. Bouguereau captures her at the very moment of opening up its right pulpy insides, and you can feel the mass and texture of the pomegranate in your hands. Is it just me, or is it rendered so exquisitely that the ravishing visuality spills over into other senses as if touch is engaged even the scent of the fruit. And yes, you have that typical Bouguereau stare, and yet she is rendered with such sensitivity. Her inwardness and human presence is so clear. Look at her long enough, and it's almost as if she emerges from the painting as a living, feeling human being. And she has real character and a degree of self possession and even strength so fully realized I half expect her to speak. Eyes, touch, scent, hearing, it's quite a painting. Her earrings are rendered so carefully. Specialists have identified exactly where and when they would have been made. And there is a classical balance to the painting. Even in formal terms of color and shape, it's so beautifully and complexly structured, the red of the earring matching the red of the pomegranate. In terms of finish and form and realization, it joins the tiny pantheon of works of Bouguereau that are true masterpieces. In 1850, a quarter century before Girl with the Pomegranate, Bouguereau had captured the essence of the eighth circle of hell where liars and counterfeiters go at it in Dante's Inferno. And 18 years after Pomegranate, Bouguereau captures the dreamy, mythical world between nightmare and pleasure in his bat-besieged painting. The night. In 1862, we have the astonishing Orestes pursued by the Furies. Orestes has avenged his father by murdering his own mother. And she hasn't even hit the ground when the mythological Furies surge up in their cackling frenzy, reproaching him for matricide. I don't know if I have ever seen a painting so vivid in its portrayal of being racked by guilt and remorse. Orestes will never hear silence again. He will never not burn with shame and despair. He will never be okay. He will never be free of the furies of myth and of mind. And in 1894, we have Bouguereau's The Pearl. The theme of Venus rising from the sea engages such a richly mythic and psychological story of origins. Courbet had earlier in the century nudged the theme away from the mythological a bit, and here Bouguereau portrays water and shells and shore in ways with an almost naturalist's attention to detail. And yet, the entire mythic resonance of Venus rising from the sea of creation and birth just emanates from the painting. There is the enormous pearl at her feet. And yet, as she tumbles out of myth and out of allegory into the world of dream and birth,
earth and ravishing erotics. She feels so real. Now, of course, what Bouguereau is most famous for is his endless studies of French Provencal life, most of which involve images of young women or children at play or project or sometimes troubled. And always, always, there is that engaging, even, hungry Bouguereau gaze. There were hundreds of these, and mostly that isn't the Bouguereau I love, though a very few, like the nut gatherers, enter that rare territory of masterpiece. So, to return to Girl with a Pomegranate and my original point, it is an image very much rooted in a different genre than Bouguereau is used to, and that is Orientalism. Now, that style, subgenre, or movement isn't really what it sounds like at all. In truth, it was a discovery among poets first, and then painters of the endless riches and fascinating life of the Middle East and North Africa, and was the subject of thousands of paintings. Many of the paintings portray elaborate scenes. Ong's extraordinary 1840 odalisque with slave is typical in subject, but extraordinary in realization. Just as every region is not just a geographic entity, but also a sort of country of mind, Orientalism, in the imagined sense, was like a portal European and Americans could pass into a dreamy, sensual place, fragrant and lush and colorful, a kind of Kubla Khan of mind. While his colleagues painted hundreds of scenes of imagined Middle Eastern and North African splendors, Bouguereau painted so few that that side of him was barely on the radar. He had, in fact, painted one Orientalist painting the same year as Pomegranates, and while a fascinating companion piece to our painting, it is, at least in rendering, more typical of the vast body of Bougro's work. But Girl with a Pomegranate does something astonishing. It might just be the most striking Orientalist portrait of all. I don't just mean among Bougro's work, but among everyone's. And in that sense, it recasts Bougro, at least in terms of merit, as one of the greatest painters of the Orientalist movement. And that nudges him just a bit farther from being primarily known as a painter of children in French Provencal life. I am so happy, girl with a pomegranate, has rejoined the body of Bougro's work.